Howdy everyone, Pocha here with an Age of Magic video and in today's video we're doing the Hero Spotlight for Cat Day, Age of Magic's rendition of the character from that movie, the one where the people fly around and um, you know the person visits the children and uh, Mary Poppins, Mary Poppins. So let's get into it, we'll go over his stats, his uh, animations, his skills, we'll talk a little bit about the character, how he's going to affect the Cloud Wanderers or maybe other teams and we'll go from there but coming in with his stats we have hit points at completely maxed out seven arcane stars gold stars gear 15 level 100 he comes in at 17.8 million hp speed 249 armor 290k magic damage resistance 600k basic magic damage 2.4 million magic critical hit chance 44 and magic critical damage is 4.2 million he will be the caster of the Cloud Wanderers, and his in-depth stats are here. You can pause and have a look at anything you feel you need the information for. Use it how you see fit, good or bad, up to you. I'm not the writer of your own story, so go for gold. So we'll jump over to the arena now. We'll test out these characters' abilities and have a look at how good they've done with these animations. Jumping into the arena, and if you stick around to the end of the video, we are going to do some battles with Cat Fate in it, showing off some of his strengths that he brings to the game. But jumping into the battle, we have his basic ability, Mischief Managed, performs a magic attack on one target, has a 70% chance to increase the cooldown of the target's random ability by two, and then Awakening this ability has a 70% chance to reduce the cooldown of his own random ability by two. This is probably one of the best awakenings we've seen for a basic attack a 70 percent chance to reduce his own cooldowns it's quite menacing it's quite menacing there's always going to be a time where you're using a basic attack your cooldowns are always going to be up at some point the only character that i think bypasses this is Olfren, but i think there needs to either be an awakening on him or one of the other characters on his team but he yeah, there is times where he can, you very rarely ever seen him use his basic attack. But this is insane. The ability, from what I understand, already needs to be on cooldown for it to be increased by two. And obviously, your ability needs to be on cooldown to be decreased by two. So very, very powerful basic awakening. We're going to go ahead and just attack any of these gatekeepers. We'll have a look at the animation. And he shoots his little paper plane across the field. and. Bang. Honestly, just for the theme of the character, um, I wish this basic attack just hit anyone. I wish he just flew his paper kite into the air and it just kind of hit anyone. It wasn't really directed. Just It would just be fun. I hate RNG. Completely hate RNG. But just because it's a paper... like Honestly, you, you've thrown a paper plane before. You're not aiming that thing. Unless you're like a professional paper plane builder. I mean, that thing, it's a bird, it's not a plane, but, uh, you know, you know, oh, it was a little bit too much on the old Cat Bay's basic. Let's move on to his next ability. Moving on to Cat Bay's second ability, we have First Step. Stops enemies from casting buffs on themselves for two turns. Cast the flow buff on the leader. At the end of the turn, the hero's initiative fills up by 70%. If there is no surviving leader in the squad, flow is cast on a random ally. Flow dissolves after triggering. Speeds up allies by 25% for two turns, so the speed is increased. And awakening this ability gives us the flow state fills up a higher percent of initiative, ally speed up even more. So you get a 30% speed boost, and the initiative is increased by 100%. This is probably one of the strongest support abilities I've ever seen in the game. Number one, let's not even worry about how strong the Cloud Wanderers are. This ability is... If you paid attention to my last Professor Poltro video, a universal skill. A universal skill. Now you're probably wondering, why is that important, Professor Poltro? I'm not Professor Poltro, I'm just regular Poltro. But you would be asking that question to Professor Poltro. Let's, let's jump into it. Let's analyze this ridiculously strong skill, shall we? So we're going to go ahead and cast our first steps. It gives the flow buff to our Roxanne. Now, the wording is a bit confusing. You're probably assuming she gets 100% initiative. She does not. She gets the flow buff, and then the order of turns continues as normal. Her initiative buff builds up like normal. So we come over to Roxanne now, who now gets her ability. 
Now we're just going to go ahead and cast her basic because I believe if we cast her damaging ability, it's going to kill everyone. It's because it's just a bunch of gatekeepers. So we're just going to cast her, but pretend we cast any. Oh no, let's cast our buff. Let's cast our buff. So we're going to cast our buff, and then Flo is going to kick in, and she gets an instant second. <laughs> ah! 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 Oh, go on, Roxanne. Show them. Show them. That just, it's okay. I joke. It's not going to kill them because I boosted them all to level 15. Oh! The leader's getting two turns in a row. If this is not one of the strongest support abilities, utility abilities you have seen in the game, comment what you think is stronger than this. This is insane. So there you go, Cat Fae. Um... <laughs> Already proving, with a, one of the youngest heroes in the game, proving to be one of the greatest support units so far. We're only in to ability number two. Let's move to ability number three. Because I promise you that this character still has some feats that have never been met by characters before. Moving on to Catface, third ability. We have Emergency. It is his flying skill. Now remember, the Cloud Wanderers do have synergy when casting flying skills. They benefit from each other. Flying skill performs a magic attack on all enemies. Damage is increased by 10% per unique buff on allies, excluding passive ability effects. Has a 20% chance per allied wanderer to reset the flying skill timer of another random ally. Let's go ahead and look at the awakening of this ability. Damage is increased by 100%. Increased chance to reset an ally's flying skill timer. Has a 100% chance per allied wanderer to reset flying skill timer of another random ally. Oh, so, okay, so essentially what this is doing is allowing you to have mixed heroes in the team. Before, if we go back one skill, you can see, yeah. So it has a 20% chance for Allied Wanderer to reset the flying skill timer of another random ally. Um, so you would essentially need to run a full Cloud Wanderer's team to get a 100% effect from this. But Awakening it allows you to add other characters to the team without reducing the chance. It's a 100% guarantee, like it's going to happen no matter what. You could chuck Librarian into this team, you're still going to get the full 100%. You're not going to lose 20%. So... Oh, oh, it's just it's just menacing. There's a lot of randomness. Let's go ahead and look at the animation of the ability. We've got emergency. Oh, there you go. Mary Poppins coming through with the goods. And there's the uh unnamed character doing his thing. Um very interesting. Very, very, very interesting. Um It's it's the whole you know, resets the flying skill timer of another random ally. I re I really, rarely like abilities that you've got no control over. It completely changes how some battles play out. And personally, I think it affects strategy. I really do, because it is com it's let's it's left down to numbers and coding. That's essentially all it is. So yeah, I mean, it's by far not a horrible ability. It does a fair amount of damage. Um, damage gets increased as well per unique buff, and it's the Cloud Wanderers. Just think of the buffs they apply. Just think of the buffs they apply to each other. I mean, he's going to get huge damage increase from this just from one rotation of abilities. And then, because um, you're not casting this first. You're just not. Or it would be very rare. In this team situation, excluding the, I mean, let's replace the unnamed character with Astoria, for example. Um, you, the Cloud Wanderers rarely cast their flying skills first. So you're going to get Ramfit cast his buffs. You're going to get Roxanne cast her buffs. You're going to have Astoria cast her buffs. You're going to get Eva cast her hots. And then you're going to get to Cat Fae, who is just going to have. I can't even fathom. It's definitely going to be 50% plus extra damage. Easily over 50% extra damage on this ability. Um, and then you've got Awakening, which increases damage by 100%. That's a, it's a scary ability. It's a scary ability. Then you have, I mean, again, you consider the characters, what their buffs actually do, increase damage, increase crit damage. It's, oh... 
We're in for a world of hurt, ladies and gentlemen. We're in for a world of hurt. And of course, uh, triggers the caster class mark. So that's his third. Let's jump into the next part of this hero, which again is unique to this hero. I don't believe off the top of my head this has been done on any hero in the game thus far. Moving on to Catface next skill and introducing the first hero from what I can recall that brings two passives built into one hero. He does not have a leadership and a passive. His next two skills are both passive abilities. So his first one is Young Mage. At the start of the round, it adds 60% initiative to a random enemy, as well as to allied Bliss. If Bliss is not on the squad, he gives initiative to himself. Okay, Bliss is the mysterious character on the team. You got me. Uh, the enemy who receives an initiative bonus is also slowed down by 50% for two turns. Slowdown cannot be removed before it ends. Now, this is very interesting wording because it essentially means that the Van Nords cannot magic absorb this. It gets applied regardless. Every time another ally uses a flying skill, Cap Fade dispels one random buff on every enemy. So now you've got huge, huge utility built into his first passive as well. Awakening this skill adds more initiative to a random enemy and allied bliss at the start of the round. So it goes from 60 to 70% and removes more buffs from the target. It's gone from dispelling one to two. Now you take into consideration you are using a full Cloud Wanderers team. They have four flying skills, not including Cat Fae. You are dispelling eight buffs. That is massive. That is huge. It gets rid of so much power from so many squads. The one squad that already sticks out that does not get affected by this is the Goose, Guardians of Order, because they do not rely on buffs. They have everything in built into their kit already. So just keep that in mind. But that is a huge ability, a massive ability essentially for free. It's active constantly unless you can remove Cap Fade from the, the field. This is constantly in effect. And like I said, you've got four characters on the team that have flying skills. And then you have Cap Fade himself who can reset the cooldown on flying skills. It's a vicious cycle. Vicious, vicious cycle. Cap Fae's second passive is Right Hand Man. At the start of their turn, the leader receives a shield equal to 5% of their maximum HP per debuff on themselves, excluding passive ability effects. The leader cannot be transformed or made to skip a turn. No debuffs that include turn skipping can be applied to them. The leader cannot miss and their attacks cannot be dodged. Awakening this ability, when the leader attacks a single target, it, it ignores damage reduction effects. So again, like my last video, Cat Fae is a primarily universal hero. He has been built to support many teams, specifically leaders. He is built heavily on strengthening the leader of the squad he's placed in. And it's not a faction-based support. He can do this to any leader. doesn't matter if they're light, dark. Obviously, he has some stuff built into his kit that benefits Cloud Wanderers. But overall, he's mostly a universal hero, being able to apply his benefits to multiple different squads. So keep that in mind. He's a very, very interesting hero. And he's probably one of the heroes, few heroes we've seen recently that just from what we've seen so far has applications to allow players to build various squads. It's going to be very interesting to see how people use this character. Very interesting. So we'll jump into a few battles now and we'll test him with a few different squads and see how they rack up. We'll just verse a bunch of nonsense, um, but it's just going to be interesting. I've got, got some things in mind, so let's jump into some battles. Okay, so jumping into battle, we are versing the Fabled Man Norths. This is a fully awakened, fully geared team. We're going to go ahead. Now you're going to see some things. I know someone's going to comment on it. I cannot reply, okay? The battle is how it's meant to be, okay? There's nothing buggy about this fight. So we're going to go ahead, cast our abilities with the Bliss. We cannot show you what he does at the moment, but he's doing things, okay? Now we've got the old double passive child of the OP class faction. He's going to go ahead and do his little bing, bang, boom. We're going to get some buffs out on us. We're going to go ahead, get some buffs out on us. We're going to go ahead and 
get a second turn. Ah, oh, get a second turn with our good friend Roxanne here. Get some damage out there, reduce initiative. Um, yeah, I mean it's menacing, isn't it? It's it's a scary sight. We're gonna go ahead and get some more buffs out on us. We're gonna go use our emergency. I believe it hits all enemies. Yeah. Ooh, it takes out two, 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 two. Our flying skills back up. How insane is that? But we don't need to use it. But we've got it. We remove the buffs from the old friend. We're gonna go ahead and buff our damage. Um, just use a basic attack there. Bit of dodge happening. That's fine. Jesus. Jeez, let's go just chuck a buff up because we can, yeah? And then we use our basic, kill the Freyhel and Ulfren. Uh the wolf, he he fights for he's fighting for it, but unfortunately doesn't do anything. There is the first fight with Cat Fay just uh just doing a little bit of magic. So let's mix it up. Let's use Cat Fay in a different team. Jumping into battle, and we have a fun little team. Uh we got Tiona. And people who use Tiona know why we're using her, because imagine what she could achieve getting two turns in a row. So we're going to use our ability, get the flow state up on the Tiona. Uh, we're going to get some buffs out. And now we are going to apply static charges and detonate static charge. <laughs> oh, oh boy. Um, we've got our barriers as well. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Uh, let's put evasion up. The idea here is that we're just going to trigger the static again, aren't we? What a... Oh! Catfay! Catfay, Catfay, Catfay! Cat Fae. Um, probably the most versatile hero we've seen in the game for a long time. Just think of the ways... You can apply this hero to squads. Oh, this is probably going to... This is a hero that theory crafters are going to just... They're going to go crazy over. Absolutely crazy over. When you have characters like Tiona who benefit the most from getting two lots of skills off um, and being able to conduct that in one turn, that's menacing. Absolutely menacing. Insane, absolutely insane. There you go, there is Cat Fae. Cat Fae will be a Legend of a Rat hero, and he will be taking the spotlight in events for the near future. He will be replacing Lilith in that sense, so that is going to be how you unlock him. But there you go, there is the Cat Fae spotlight. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I will answer it to the best of my ability. And wherever you're on the world, until next time, please take care of yourself.